Okay, welcome back. Uh, yes, movie, movie marathon time. Uh, as we record this on a Thursday, two thirds of this panel uh, are merely hours away from, well, the attractive two thirds of this panel. Um, I'll survive. Sorry, dude. Sorry, okay. dude. No, no, uh, you just got. You, you didn't. I'm not get the one that looks like Gimli. That's all. I know, whatever. Uh, hey, I do not look like Gimli. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Last of Us Joel. That's oh, right. Is that what you're, that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. was a comment about that. That's yeah. the comment. Uh, but yes, um, this afternoon uh, or this evening, 5 p.m. Uh, at the Cinerama Dome in L.A., um, Elise, myself, Jeremy, and a couple of other people are going to see the Cornetto trilogy, the Three Flavors Cornetto, which is... Uh, what are the three flavors? The three flavors are... Shaun of the Dead is strawberry to signify the blood okay. and the gore. The uh, the original blue is hot fuzz to signify the law and the police. What flavor is blue? Uh, is this, I think it's just the original. Do like you, vanilla? Hang on, hang on. They were, they were, I don't think there was an ever. I, I mean, I, Cornettos are like I drumsticks, ask, by you, the way. Yeah, ice cream anybody, drumsticks. Uh, anybody who's seen my waistline will know that I have been, you know, when I was in the UK, I loved a Cornetto. And um, the there was the chocolate with, chocolate with nuts. There was the strawberry. Um, I don't think there was a blue one. I really don't. Oh, I mean, I was reading that the the blue is the original. Like, no, perhaps I mean, it was just a blue packaging. Th blue, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, perhaps maybe. it was blue packaging for the just the vanilla one. Mm. But I mean, basically, what it is, it's a uh, waffle cone uh, and uh, with um, soft scoop ice cream and uh, normally chocolate nuts or fudge or toffee or whatever uh, in it and it's actually really quite it's delicious it's called a drumstick here in the states yeah, it's called yeah, yeah. I, i've had yeah. drums, the drumsticks here in the mm -hmm. states cornettos the kick the drumsticks ass oh. I'm, I'm laying that down right now if you ever get the chance to go to the uk get yourself a friggin cornetto but well, um i was reading that for uh the world's end it's a uh, mint chocolate chip yeah does that for world's end okay. world's end okay. yeah does that i don't know what the Correlation collection or right. the and yeah. you know we've probably Combined got this totally <laughs> wrong and uh you can all educate us in the things but i mean look let's face it um cornettos are fantastic but the movies themselves we're going to see uh Shaun of the dead hot fuzz and then finishing up with the world's end um edgar wright simon Pegg, and nick frost are supposed to be there um they are serving um pub snacks apparently oh nice yes, yes. Um, and i'm going to steal this because i can't yeah, be to open that up again so why are we excited to see the world's end? And I look, I know why I'm excited, but at least I'm going to let you go first. Well, why Snowpiercer doesn't come out until 2014, oh, Marcus. So, um, I mean, no, this is kind of the movie that I was most excited for this summer. And as of now, I'm pretty disappointed with the summer movie. Season. Like, I don't know, is there anything that's been like a big hit with you guys this summer? Very few mainstream films, mostly a lot of indie stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um,. Oh, although actually, well, World War Z actually was oh, a big yeah. surprise. But, yeah, that was but, that's because it wasn't bad. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, but it was better than bad. Not yeah. bad, you know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't. It, it actually, it actually hit. Uh, it, it, yeah, it worked. I think we're all, we're, we're all uh, underwhelmed with Fast and Furious. Much everything was early in the summer. It was. I mean, every every week was kind of a little bit of a punch to the gut. I think everything kind of disappointed in one way or shape or form. To me, this is just the last vestige of something to salvage my summer movie season. Like, right. And it, it's you know the James Franco. Uh, ensemble movie that was fun but it felt just like a bunch of guys getting together and hanging out whereas this feels like a bunch of guys we all like having a movie with a plot and you know still well, having fun now do you know what the movie's about yeah it's about um, a couple of guys who decide and a couple by I mean uh, five, sorry, five I think. guys who grew up together in a small uh, suburban town mm -hmm. in, in, in England and uh, they decide uh, you know to go back after many years and finish this legendary pub crawl because pub crawls are a rite of passage in the UK. Uh, we have one where I'm from uh, called the Mumbles Mile, and I think there's like 20 pubs in a one mile stretch. It's fantastic. Wow. But it's a rite of passage and a badge of honor where you, you, know, you do the pub crawl, you have a pint at each pub or you know, a drink or whatever, and you know, you, if you can survive that, it's like manhood. And these guys didn't finish the pub crawl the first time around they didn't get to that mythical last pub which is the world's end so the um simon Pegg character who is uh you know again a total counter to i think the characters you'd see in the well not a total counter but i mean the the uh shawn of the dead character was trying to be a little bit more straight laced and you know with his girlfriend you know with his girlfriend and you know nick nick frost was the total 
Boo's head, and then you look at um, Hot Fuzz, and again he was very more, you know, much more straight laced. This time he is the sort of like you know the 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 boy who never grew up. Right. He's the one who he's the one is, in Arrested Development still. Yeah. yeah, he's the he's the one who you know dresses in black and is like you know forty going on forty. Anti-establishment. Yeah, um, you know the oldest swinger in town, you you could call it. And then you got um, Nick Frost, who is the uh, total op- opposite in India you know, this time. I mean, he's almost like a, a Frank the Tank character, <laughs> right? Where he's grown up and he's he's gone. But anyway, they all they get together eventually and go back. And this is where they f- start to find that a lot of the people in their hometown have been replaced with alien robots. Okay, so it's almost kind of a Stepford Wives in a weird way. It's, yeah, it's it's it is very Stepfordy. And I mean, look, the thing I like about the you know the the movies that Edgar Wright does with these two guys is that they're very good at capturing a certain aspect of British culture. Um, you know, Shaun of the Dead nailed it. Hot Fuzz nailed you know the more rural mentality and just being sticking this bizarre and you know this bizarre underlying story or this um, veneer of like everything's perfect and picturesque like the, uh, the greater good yeah <laughs> um but you know and then so now we you know he they go back and uh Hilarity will know that in Sue. Sue, right, right. Well, uh, you mentioned them. I mean, uh, carrying over some kind of a sense of uh, a very British feel. And they're, br- I mean, initially though, they are British movies. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they, Shaun of the Dead was made in England for Eng- for British release, and then luckily caught on and was then released in America because it was out there for several months, I believe, before they actually finally decided to release it here. Yeah. Um, I mean, Hot Fuzz for the for the most part is the same way. Scott Pilgrim would be Edgar Wright's really only kind of American mainstream movie, I guess, in that way, shape, or form. I think Hot, Hot Fuzz actually got a, a much quicker release than you know the the, the distance between Shaun of the Dead, right. a wider release, um, and a wider sure. release. Um, so, I mean, he's been building a large audience over time here, that's yeah. for sure. And then you know, uh, Peg and Frost also went and did Paul, right? Which they co-wrote, but it was with somebody. It was directed by somebody else, correct? Yes. But uh, that was probably their most mainstream movie together. I mean, it was obviously set. You know, just after Comic Con, going right. to Area Fifty One, which I really enjoyed, and again, that was a huge. That was, I think, that was them really giving into their fanboy oh, uh, urges. But it was, it was really cool. But yeah, I, I like how. I mean, you know, I live in LA. It's fantastic here. The weather is great. The food is great. The people are mostly great. Um, we try. I know. Bless you. <laughs> uh, but no, you know, it, it's you know, this is my home, and I love it. But I'm from. Another country, right. and you know, to the, for me, you know, seeing these sort of movies, and I'm not a big fan of everything, you know, Frost, Peg, and and, and Edgar Wright have done. I mean, you know, I think uh, How to Lose Friends and Alienate People is that was uh, a one misfire, of the worst, mm-hmm. worst movies of all time. Yeah, that was a misfire, um, and I'm sure they will say that as well. But I mean, it's just this slice of home for me that is so easily recognizable. Um, and that's the primary attraction for me. I'm, I'm making no bones about it. I mean, nostalgia, but I mean, it also touches for me that I do go home. I do go back to see my family every year, 18 months, and stuff hasn't changed. And you, it's almost like, you know, there is this um, level of continuity, this level of, you know, the greater good that you see from Hot Fuzz, uh, from Hot Fuzz where you see the, you know, the same people organizing the carnivals or the, the garden shows and, you know, everything must be nice and like this and they're down in the chapel on Sunday, isn't it? And it's all lovely. And I'm not criticizing it. I mean, it's just, it just seems to be everything, you know, where I'm from is almost in a time lock. I mean, you know, there's Twitter and cell phones and right. everybody's got satellite dishes and everything, but it just brings this little thing home to me for me it's like i think we'll we haven't seen it yet obviously but i think we'll see more connections to tie these films together beyond just like the cornetto dessert like to me it's like they are the misfits and the odd outcasts and people that can't conform to society but they are always in a position where everyone around them gets turned into some kind of like weirdo or like like Everyone around them is zombies, and Sean, right. the, his roommate is like, "Get a job, you know, get a real job." But then, mean, but then, you know, he becomes the, the outsider essentially. Right. And then right. in like Hot Fuzz, he's no. the Spoilers. the out, outcast, and right. so on and so forth. Right. Yeah, look, let's just set a rule now. If a movie is over two years old, mm-hmm. and we start talking about you haven't seen it, you, there's going to be spoilers. And if you haven't seen it, pause the podcast. Go watch the fucking movie and come back because honestly, after two years, if you still haven't seen it, yeah, whatever. that's a good rule. I'll go with that. All right, that's the new rule. Um, but yeah, everybody dies. <laughs> yeah, no, well, no, everybody, well, no, fuck it, everybody's yeah, in. Uh, everybody. Everybody, everybody's, everybody's part of the uh, is in on the murders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pretty yeah. much. It's very yeah. Agatha Christie slash Wicker Man slash. Uh, <laughs> 
other such things. Um, I think this is going to be interesting because this is probably, <clears throat> excuse me, the litmus test for the trio, as it were, because as you said, the first one got a release as an afterthought. The second one, it was a little bit closer. Uh, Paul did okay, right. but yeah. that was no way, you know, no Edgar Wright. Scott Pilgrim didn't do okay at the theaters, did very well on uh, Blu-ray and yeah, it's everything. it's gained a true cult following, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is the first time, I mean, you know, Simon Pegg has been the breakout star. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been in Star Trek, he's been in Mission Impossible. Uh, you know, he has become, you know, he's taken these smaller characters, especially in Mission Impossible, and made, you know, just that, he has this chemistry, and I'm not talking about, you know, Bradley Cooper swoony. Right. He has this sense of humor. Sure, yeah, he has and, a charm. Yeah, yeah he, has a, he has definitely an innate charm. And this is uh, this is going to be interesting, especially with uh, Wright going off to do Ant Man, uh, you know, yeah. doing Ant Man right now. I mean, this is probably for him a you know a big chance to show he can open big. Is there anything else coming out this weekend? Uh, in Los Angeles, the only thing I want to see is the Grandmaster, which is the mm -hmm. new Wong Kar Wai film about Ip Man. So but I mean, uh, you know, is there, what else is coming out this weekend? And then your next comes out this weekend. Which oh right, which is getting good good very solid reviews, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's looking like a good a good horror film. So I mean. You know, would you know? I think Hot Fuzz came in at number five, uh, debuted at number five in the box office, wow. and that was. But it wasn't as big a release as right. this one is. I mean, they've been all over Comic Con. This one, yeah, they this give, one they're really pushing. Yeah, uh, lots of trailers. I mean, obviously the buzz from the UK. The film's been out there for three weeks, and it's very, very positive. Nice. Um, so yeah, I think next. Uh, I'm not here next week. I can't can, review it. Can it beat We're the Millers? The big break out of the summer which is the thing that surprises well, me well it doesn't have jennifer aniston stripping no but it uh might have nick frost stripping though I'd, he's got bigger boobs so. i'd watch that no look I, like i said nick frost i mean they're all i love them all they're awesome uh like i said for me it's a slice of home i am so stoked for this movie and yeah i'm hoping that i don't come out disappointed because i think if this one disappoints after the summer we've had i might never watch another movie yeah. again I, wow. I can't see it disappointing I just can't. We used I to refuse. say that about we said that about Elysium before we saw it. <laughs> I didn't. You, yes, you did. <laughs> no. You thought you'd said it about something. Wait, what, I'm trying to think of the movie that you really liked. The, Snowpiercer. No, was that, that the wasn't the one. Okay. Oh, Maybe that I'm was sorry, it. Marcus. All right. If anybody <laughs> out there has anything to do with Snowpiercer in any way, shape, or form, please reach out to me on Twitter so that I can basically put you and Elise together, and you, you, we can do something to sort of like satiate her Snowpiercer craving. Because I the game the, the game now the, we're getting the naughty. film no the film doesn't come out until we don't know I'm sometime confirmed, next year Marcus sometime next year yes <laughs> yeah. we're looking at sometime next year if you want me to live to next year and not do something daft to myself like i don't know cut my tongue out or something or gouge my eyes out please i've got to, we got to hook this girl up with something snow psrs does anybody know chris evans i don't i don't really tweet so you guys can flash me the snow signal i'll look in the skies you for really it. don't want to say tweet <laughs> and flash me <laughs> tweet and flash me in the same sentence not a good idea so tweet <laughs> at annoy gamer all right if you can if you can set up chris evans to come and just talk at least down from the Snowpiercer ledge that she's on right now, you'll be doing me, game trailers, John, the world, a huge service. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Thanks, John. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. All right. Um, book club. Book that club. we're at already. Wow. Yeah, okay. we're. At, it's 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 one of those weeks. There's not there's not a huge. There's amount not a lot going on. You're right. Let's but move on. We do have book club. Yay. And, uh, like like good students, we brought our books. Mine's electronic. I left it upstairs. I I tried. To, I decided to download because I had read. I had read my old versions. Actually, you bought. Did you borrow this or did you yes, buy another I did. copy? My my old versions in Canada. And my old still. version is back in my other place as well. So I bought this. And to the person who asked, why can't we show bits from the things? Uh, so there you go. There's bits from the comic book. So we're showing frames from the comic book. Because <laughs> yes, I'm guessing okay. otherwise we'll let's have to record stuff. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah fables. Um, Fables, 2002 was first released? I believe yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, so and th I'm... Th this is your first time reading it, correct? Yeah, Because we both totally read it before. I am late to the, the table, but yeah. uh, you know what? I'm going to let you lead this one, John. Uh, okay, Fables. Bill Willingham. Huh? Bill Willingham, author. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. No, 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 no go ahead. No, 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 please, so, go ahead. No. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize that before we... Written by? Because this man has done a huge undertaking in writing all these books. Written so. by? Bill Willingham. And how many volumes of Fables are there by now? Because this has been, again, this has been running pretty constantly, right, since 2002? Or did he, The original Fables itself was wrapped up. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's still publishing new... I, I'm only at about, like, the... I last stopped at maybe issue 100. Okay. Um, but so that was a while the, ago. But in the main... 
series, I want to say they're at like 17 or 18 volumes. Wow. Grades. There, there is a slew of them. So obviously I was, I was at the bookstore um, and, you know, the comic book stores trying to figure out which ones I could get. And there's not only fables, but there is so many spinoffs yeah. of fables. Um, I was sharing the story that um, I thought I was getting fables volume two. And I ended up going home with fables, Witches. Which is a very interesting spin. I mean, it focuses more on the female characters. And we find out Rapunzel's a lesbian. But we're not talking about that one right now. We're going to talk about Fables 1. <laughs> and uh, it's just, I mean, I like I said, it's not, this is not, fa this, this is not Fable, uh, you know, Fable, you know, it's not Aesop's Fables. No. It is no. not The Wizard of Oz. It is not something you want to give. Uh, but it your, is. More in, well, no, I mean, yeah. as in. It's it's not the um, you it's know not your mother's the, yeah it's you not your mother's your fairy tale your grandmother's fairy tale yeah. yeah. um, but yes um, go on all right so fables basically takes place uh, in a small area in New York there's a place called Fable Town uh, it has been surrounded to some extent by a magic spell so it uh, feels like regular New York uh, all of the fairy tale characters throughout all of history used to uh, live in the world of the fables uh, the big bad wolf Snow White. The homelands. They the homelands, it, right. Yeah. They refer to them as the homelands. So any, all the fairy tales from all of our histories actually have a physical place they used to live in the homelands. Uh, a mysterious force known as the Adversary had shown, came in and started destroying the lands and the people and taking it over. So many of these uh, characters escaped to New York where they created their uh, own little townlet that uh, they call uh, Fable Town. Yeah, I think Korea Town, but with Fable characters. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, uh, the main characters, this, this, now this is the, the nice thing about this novel, the, the nice thing about this novel, the nice thing about this collection is that it introduces a lot of the main characters that you're going to be dealing with for, uh, several. It's really remarkable how many, how many characters, characters they cram into it. Yeah. You just get a glimpse of yeah. like Cinderella. It's just like, there she is, but, but she's so, just enough. she's yeah. so deep. It, I think you'll, Cinderella is such a cool character if you read more and. Well, one of the other things I like about it is that you will read it, you will, you know, you'll read the segment and there's a character in it. And you'll say, oh, okay. And you not realize who they are, are until right. two panels down. Right. So there's a, the, the section with Beauty and the Beast. Right. I, I didn't actually twig it was Beauty and the Beast until, uh, 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 you know, just like I said, a couple of pages on where all of a sudden light bulb went on. And we're like, ah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, the take on their story is kind of that they're, they're falling out of love. Love, yeah. They're very right? much in a dysfunctional marriage at this point in time. And whenever she gets upset at him, he starts reverting back into his beast character a little bit. Uh, any fable who the, – the, the, the role is any fable who lives in Fable Town has to have a magic spell put on them so they look human and can interact with uh, the Mundies, who are the normal human being, the mundanes. Think muggles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, if you don't, if you can't, there are other characters like Talking Pigs, stuff like that. They live up north – on the farm, which is touched on in this first volume, but they don't actually go there yet. No. Um, so this first volume uh, introduces uh, who's going to be a main character for quite a while, Big B, who is the big bad wolf. Big B Wolf is Performed his name. Big Get it? Wolf. Right. Uh, who is the sheriff of Fable Town. Fable Town. Uh, and a mystery is put forth in front of him. Snow White's sister, uh, Snow Red, Rose Red, excuse me, Rose Red, has gone missing and her entire home is covered in blood. Uh, her boyfriend Jack, who is Jack B. Nimble, uh, it, it has 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 basically said, "Oh no, I don't know what's happened to her," et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it was uh, I, I thought it was Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. It is Jack from Jack and the Bean Beanstalk. Excuse okay. me. Yeah. Or otherwise, is, no, otherwise known as Jack the Giant Killer. Jack the Giant Killer, right? And because and because there are other things like like there's a Prince Charming in this as well, who is the Prince Charming from yeah, all of the fairy tales. But I think tales. that's that's the the humorous thing about him is that he's this Prince Charming that has hooked up with all the princesses all the, yeah. because he's a total scumbag. Yeah, he's yeah he's banged everybody. And can I can I just say on the subject of that the best line in this in this this book. Prince Charming is talking about swordsmanship. Yeah. And then he uses one of the best words ever, coxmanship. Coxmanship. Uh, yeah. And the fact that that word, I mean, that's something I have not heard um, uttered in any like form for about, I don't know, 15 years or so. Um, Last you know. time I know was a movie called Sea of Love with Al Pacino where it was used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, but the fact that I remember that the part. The exact Yeah, reference. the exact reference. Yeah. I can nail that one. I mean, it's definitely, it's just one of those things that just made me laugh and smile and actually almost uh, spit out the drink I was I was inhaling at the time. you got to so. know when to thrust and when to parry. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's got, but that's the great wow. thing. It's got this humor. And it's in the line. Yeah, we won't we won't perhaps give away, you know, too much of the story. No. There is a, you know, there is a murder. It's a, a murder mystery at the core of this one. You've got, 
uh, like you said, Rose Red, Jack. You you see one of the little pigs. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, Bluebeard <clears throat> is uh, is, is worked into it, which shows you that the fables actually go well beyond oh, any yeah. Mother Goose stuff or oh, yeah. kind like, of the classic American fairy tales. One of the more I, I I remember the first time I read this, I loved it. They they talk about uh, when the when the adversary t- overtook the homelands, right. a great lion fell, yeah. and he was yeah. holier than thou, and that, I guess yeah. that's the allusion to Aslan yep. of yep. Chronicles of Narnia, and I was like, that's excellent. Like, and, and then I don't know if it's volume excellent. two or volume three, but uh, I, I don't know how you pronounce it. The Baba Yaga, the... the oh, the witch? Yeah, yeah, yeah the Russian the, the, the Russian witch mm-hmm. is introduced to it as well. So they, 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 they show off, um, they do show off uh, Tin Man. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, escaping from... Uh, the Emerald you know, City. From, yeah. You got uh, Little Boy Blue. You got uh, uh, the frog from the frog... The, the, the frog prince is in it. Now he's a janitor. And also the, the, the fun thing really about this book is that... They're incredibly modern, these characters. So it's not like, you know, they're, they're, they're foul mouth. Uh, all of the, anything that would have been considered kind of like a flaw in their fairy tales, when you think about it, becomes very much this real flaw in real life. And it's almost as if, the, you know, in, in the fairy tales, they were these characters, even though they had their issues. But it's like coming to New York, yeah. coming into the world to mix with the mundanes um, has really, sort of, you know, they've absorbed all the lesser characteristics, Ristics, which yep. does make them all the more human. Yeah, and as far as like female character empowering female characters go, and well written female characters, like this series, yeah, definitely oh, excels. At Snow that. White is Snow White is fantastic, Snow actually. Even She's Rose Red when she gets her act together, together yeah, it's pretty excellent. Yeah, well, obviously we see Rapunzel later. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, She's no, doing no, no, her thing. You know, well, I mean, she's doing her thing, but I mean, she is a very strong female yeah. character who you know she is the the center point of the you know of that particular story but i mean you know the stuff she goes through uh you know is actually kind of touching i mean there is a lot of, this is a very you know these are very dark in places but also hysterically funny oh, yeah. yeah i mean some of the best comedy writing i've seen in a in a book and i uh i gotta say i'm disappointed with myself that it's taken me 12 11 years to actually get into this but um i'm already you know two books in this week because I only bought this on Monday, and right. then I went and bought two <laughs> yesterday. Um, yeah, it, it it sucks you in. I mean, right off the bat, it sucks you in. The murder mystery plot is is the introduction to get you into the world, but that's what allows you to be introduced to all the different characters and all the different scenarios. And it's it's a great way to set up the series. I mean, it really is a smart way to set up the series. So yes, I think we can all safely say we recommend this. Oh, highly, yeah. Uh, especially if you're if you're a new uh, a newbie, and there are so many of them. Um, are you excited to play the Telltale games game now? I well, I was I was excited anyway. I mean, the idea of the, of the big bad wolf being you know yeah. a cop is is kind of interesting. But I mean, even just I mean some of the other stuff. I mean, like um, there's a little story with uh, Reynard the Fox. The, in in the witch's story, and you know, you see how uh, you know how he has given been given human form, and how he tries to interact with somebody and date somebody, and it's it's really quite disgusting in some ways, but also really really hysterical. I mean, um, very ob- you know some great observations on human nature and animalistic nature as mm-hmm. well. Um, okay, so do we have a uh, book club for next week? I hadn't thought of one. I don't. I don't believe we do because actually, since everybody's out of town. Okay, so um, there is no book club for this week. Instead, we are going with movie club, and I'm going to use oh. host's privilege to tell you all to go watch The World's End. We haven't seen it yet, but uh, I'm sure these guys will be talking about it next week. Um, and uh, I would love to see that particular movie if it's as good as the reviews from you know the rest of the world have been saying. I would love to see it open really well here in the U.S. this week. Because let's face it, I mean, you're America, you dominate the world. Um, it would be nice for the little country <laughs> to shaft all the shitty movies that have been out this year. Hooray. Uh, other than that, I mean, obviously, yeah, pick up Fables. Go through the whole Fables section. Um, and then in two weeks when I'm back and Jeremy's back, I'm sure, oh, you, you know. Just Whoever. Me, yeah, you you think of, ne- think of next week, what we're going to do, and let us know so that we can all read the next comic. I'm thinking Sandman. That's not a bad idea. My vote actually. is always for Umbrella Academy. But I've never read Umbrella Academy. No, I've never read it either. That's a possibility. I've read Sandman. Sandman. It's good. I have read Sandman. All right. Well, too. you know well, what? Actually, well, I think we've all picked one. I mean, at, at least you haven't picked one, have you? No, but I, I haven't read Sandman. You haven't read Sandman? Hmm. The art kind of, it's a little dated to me, and I so I haven't been able to get into it, but I know I should. 
All right. We, well, anyway, it's movie. It's movie. It's movie club this week. Go watch right. On the Dead, and then next week, these two will put I mean, their heads together. At World's End. And we'll, uh, yeah, sorry, what? You said Shaun of the Dead. Shaun, watch Shaun of the Dead as well. If you yeah, haven't seen any of these movies, watch all three what's of them. wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, you know, one is a great uh, pastiche of horror movies. One is a great uh, pastiche of the buddy cop movies. Yeah. And this is, an, the new one's an alien invasion. I mean, get drunk, go with your friends, get bollocks, have fun. Arr. See you next week. Thank <music> you.